from the early papers um, submitted were relevant to several policy discussions related to development in the Amazon. And those stories got picked up, that, that work got picked up by other NGOs. It opened up a new public that, that we, could, we could communicate with, because we could say, look, here's the paper, it's online, everybody can get it, you can share it with anybody. And I thought about the nature of our, of our research, it was very interdisciplinary, and we thought the best home in the end would be the plus one because of the open source platform um, and, uh, and the fact that plus one really encourages um, uh, multiple disciplines to come together uh, to do research. It tends to publish uh, uh, papers of wide significance, broad significance, and this is clearly a paper that um, is important not just to oceanographers, but uh, to all kinds of audiences. Uh, uh, biologists, uh, to uh, chemists, ecotoxicologists, and so forth. So uh, that's, I think that's part of the reason it has received so much attention. The results really got into the media a lot, and we've been hoping for that from the start, and we did a lot of interviews, it was in a lot of newspapers, and uh, that, was, that was really helpful to us because we wanted to get this message out there. If you come up with a new technique and say, hey, something else is different, Everybody loves that. If you say, oh, we think there's a mistake in the literature, sometimes it's hard to get that published. So that's why we first uh, started looking at PLOS One. And we thought that these stripy nanoparticles, are a lot of what could be interesting about them is uh, that they might go into cells in a different way. So we knew that a lot of biologists that read PLOS One would be interested in the research anyway. And it really was a breath of fresh air that it wasn't only a uh, willing to consider the paper they were very positive they were very positive about the idea of reanalyzing old data journals like PLOS that allow you know virtually unlimited high resolution color figures um, that allow extensive descriptive text with space you know to include that in the, in the main body of the article that's really critical for doing the good descriptive science that underlies uh, our field of paleontology we reached a point where we were like, well, we really need to get this work out and we need to get it widely accessible. Um, so we chose PLOS One and we wanted it very much to be open access, to have our users have access to it for free. Um, and that includes especially the non-academics and the practitioners that were part of our target audience. And the work has been really widely cited in the academic literature, we're, we're thrilled. Plus one, you have, you know, either purely medical funding or methodology development, all published in one single platform that attract people from different backgrounds. And that actually is uh, uh, good for communications. It offers a unique venue uh, to publish uh, some science that uh, would be hard to publish in other journals. In some way, uh, some of the studies are just uh, replications of, uh, was, uh, of what was done for these other regions. And sometimes it's uh, hard to find uh, avenue for these papers. Our is a method paper and uh, plus a case study. And this is a special format which is offered by PLOS ONE. And so we thought that it, we would take advantage of this. So our goal was to reach a very broad community, as broad as possible, because the subject is really reproducibility in science. And so um, I think PLOS ONE has this very, very wide net that it casts in terms of areas of science that it covers uh, that we really liked. A lot of the publications that I see on how to improve the scientific communication process uh, are from PLOS ONE. For over 10 years, PLOS ONE has been at the forefront for innovative and open and scholarly communication. Join us and be part of the next 10 years of successful open access publishing.